Cast stone is a highly refined architectural precast concrete building stone, similar in appearance, and manufactured to simulate the color, texture, and appearance of natural cut stone. In this video tutorial, we will move through the entire production process in making cast stone. By the end of the tutorial, you will become familiar with advanced architectural stone's production process, key terminology used in making stone, and a tamper's day-to-day -day job. Before we can begin the hands-on process of tamping, you must ensure that your workstation is clean and neat. This will ensure that you have the space to make and move the stone without causing damage to the stone. Once the workstation is ready, the next step is to gather the necessary tools and supplies. At your station, you should have your wheelbarrow to gather dry mix, a shovel, a tamping gun, a drill, knifing tools, styrofoam, tape, and any safety equipment, such as gloves or glasses. Next, you must look at the shop ticket to make sure that you have the following items. The correct color of dry mix for the stone, the correct mold and mold pieces, and any other items your stone needs, such as rebar, ferrule loops, or coil loops. Once all your needed supplies have been gathered, the tamping process can begin. To make the stone, you take the mold and place it on your work table. You should clean and inspect the mold. This step is important because any damage the mold has will be reflected on your finished stone. Once you are sure the mold is clean, you can begin. This stone calls for two coil loops, so the tamper attaches those before starting the tamping process. Next, you can begin shoveling dry mix into the mold. You want to make sure you have enough dry mix in your mold so that the tamping gun does not damage the bottom of the mold, which is the front of your stone. The dry mix in your mold should look like a pyramid or a peaked mountain. Once you have enough dry mix in your mold, you will use your tamping gun to compress the dry mix into the mold. This layer of material will be the face of the stone and must be perfect. The tamping gun is connected to a compressed air machine that gives you 80 to 100 pounds of pressure when applied to the dry mix, so you must be careful when using the tamping gun. When you are tamping, you will create a pattern going in a consistent direction across the mold. You want to make sure the dry mix is compacted well, so this process is usually repeated two or three times depending on the height of the stone. However, if you overcompact the dry mix, it will result in a stone that is wet. Wet stones will leave behind marks that will prevent the stone from passing quality control, so you must be careful not to overcompact the dry mix. Next, you must scratch the full surface of the dry mix with a cultivator tool. This step allows the mix in your mold to bond with the mix you will add in the next layer. Next, you will add rebar if the piece requires it. If the piece is over 24 inches, then it will always have rebar, but the size of the rebar may vary. Check your shop ticket to make sure you have the right size of rebar and the correct number of pieces. The rebar is placed in the center of the stone, unless the shop ticket says otherwise. In this case, the rebar is bent through the coil loop to reinforce the piece. Next, fill the mold again with dry mix creating a pyramid shape again. Use the tamping gun again to compact the dry mix. At this point, your mold should be completely filled by compacted dry mix. The next step is to screed the back of the stone. This means leveling with a straight edge using a back and forth motion while moving across the surface. Be sure that all corners and edges are well compacted. Once the stone is level, styrofoam is placed on the back of the stone. The styrofoam will protect the back of the stone from damage when you flip the stone. It will also make it easier to move the stone. Once you carefully flip the stone, the next step is to remove the mold from the stone. This is the most difficult task to do without damaging the stone. The mold is disassembled in an L shape to make it easier to remove from the stone, unless your mold requires a different approach. Using your drill, remove the screws from the opposite corners of the mold. Once the screws are out, carefully and slowly pull one side of the mold towards your body in an up and outward motion. Then remove the back of the mold, again in an up and outward motion. 
Once the mold is off the stone, it's called a green stone, since it is very soft and can be easily damaged. You should check the stone to make sure that there are no broken corners or edges or defects on the face of the stone. If there are, using a knifing tool, carefully patch the areas of the stone that are broken. If knifing was needed, try to find out what caused the problem and see if it can be fixed so that your next stone does not have the same problem. Next, you must move the stone to a safer location where it can begin the hardening process. Once stones have been set out, workers will come by and spray the stones with water, which helps the hardening process. Now you will need to reassemble the mold. Take time to clean the mold and add a layer of lacquer finish if needed. Make sure the screws are tight and there is no damage to the face of the next stone. Once the mold is reassembled, you can start the tamping process again.